Let's do an example involving the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. A copper rod with mass per unit length lambda is equal to 0 0.954 kg per meter carries a current of 15 amperes into the page. The rod is in a uniform magnetic field and hangs at an angle of 10 degrees from the vertical. What's the direction of the magnetic field? It can only be in the four directions on the pictures. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field? As always, first thing is to draw a picture. So I've drawn an exaggerated version of the wire that is holding the copper rod and the current going into the page. Gravity will point down. The tension force in the string will point in the upper left hand corner and that means that the magnetic force must point to the right if we want the rod to hang without moving. And This means that the free body diagram looks like this with gravity and the magnetic force and the tension. So now we can determine the direction of the magnetic field. We place our hand along the current and we rotate our hand until our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic force and then we see that the palm of our hand points up and we can bend our fingers upward. This means that the magnetic field must point up. Now to find the magnitude of the magnetic field we are going to have to use Newton's laws. And the first thing that needs to be done is to split the forces up into their components. So the tension has a negative x component and a positive y component. The x component is minus t sine theta, where theta is the 10 degree angle from the vertical at which the wire is hanging. The y component of the tension is t cos theta. The magnetic force is ILB sine theta, but this, that theta refers to the angle between the magnetic field and the current carrying wire. And the angle between the magnetic field and the current carrying wire is 90 degrees. And that's why I wrote ILB sine of 90. Sine of 90, of course, is equal to 1. And so in further calculations, we'll just write ILB. Finally, for gravity, there's no x component, but the y component is minus mg and I've replaced m with the mass per unit of length multiplied by the length of the rod. So kilograms divided by meters multiplied by meters will give us the total mass of the rod, of course. And when we add up all the forces, we know that that should be equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is zero for something that is in equilibrium. We'll start by writing Newton's second law in the y direction. So adding up all the forces in the y, we get t cos theta minus lambda l g, and that has to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, zero. In these problems, the strategy is always to solve for something and replace a Newton's second law in the x direction. In this case, we don't really care about the tension. So solving for tension, we get lambda L G over cos theta, which we will replace in Newton's second law in the x direction. Newton's second law in the x direction is I L B minus T sine theta is equal to zero. We are going to replace the T and we get I L B minus lambda L G over cos theta multiplied by sine theta. Now we can simplify this a little bit by replacing sine over cos by a tangent and we get ILB minus lambda LG tan theta. Finally, we solve for the magnetic field. We get lambda G tan theta over I. Now you'll notice that there was the length of the rod in the two terms in the line above and so when we divided lambda L G tan theta by I times L the two L's cancelled and so now when we plug in the numbers we get 0 0.954 kilograms per meters multiplied by 9.8 newtons per kilogram times tan theta divided by 15 amperes 
and that gives us a magnetic field of 0.110 Tesla. All done! Spread the joy of physics!